Hey everybody, welcome back to Creekside Maples. We are building a chicken plucker. It's a project I've had on the go now for quite a while. I've been assembling all the parts. And uh, basically, I'm taking this blue barrel and we are making it into a chicken plucker. I have cut the top this way, which will now become my bottom. And the bottom, well now, I've cut it open, cut it out, it becomes my top. I made just a little um, frame that sits over it. And what this does, it goes right over it, just like that. Pushes down, and then bolts on here. And here and that way once it bolts on there I could just wheel it around just like that so that's pretty cool all I did with to make this frame here was I had some three-quarter inch rigid conduit so I just took it and I bent it in a circle and welded it together for the top ring and then I just took the other piece and I bent it for make a handle and then I doubled it here because that's where the motor is going to sit and everything so I wanted it nice and strong the wheels are just lawnmower wheels that's all they are I had an old pair here on a piece of threaded rod I don't know if you can see this or not but I bent the uh, rigid pipe right here and out and then I just drilled it and put all thread all the way through and then I put uh, washers and uh, some nuts welded them in place so it wouldn't move and that's what we did there this is galvanized pipe so when you're welding galvanized make sure you grind that galvanizing off first the fumes that come out of that are not good for you and it makes it very difficult to weld. So what I'm doing now is I have a piece of three quarter inch, it's basically nylon and I made a circle. I just put a screw in the center, found the uh, diameter of the inside of my barrel and this piece, once I cut it out, will set down inside my barrel and give me a base and I will take a block and bolt it here and then I will have a shaft that comes down into that so I'm just going to use the jigsaw to cut this out with if you want to know how I got this circle I just found whatever the diameter was inside the diameter of the tub of the barrel and then I put a screw in this halfway and then cut a piece of string and wrapped it on around my marker and around the screw head and that gave me the perfect circle I need here so there's that this down here and there I don't know if you can see it or not but there's a little channel right here and I want that to set right in that I'm thinking if I just put a couple screws here it should make it so that I can lay that in there level so folks what I did here obviously you can't hold that piece of nylon in place in there because you can't get your hands around the edges and I didn't put a handle in the center because that's where my block is sitting probably hindsight I would have attached the block first and put the shaft in but all I did was took four screws put them through here same spot and uh, that allowed that piece of nylon to settle right down on top of those so now I'll put some screws in and uh, it'll be fine 
I'm going to go get some stainless steel screws with flat heads uh, called pan heads so they'll catch on that a little better. I'm afraid these are just going to pull through. And what I'm doing now, I'm just putting this bushing here and uh, it's, as you can see, straight through. It's very important when you're putting these on to get them centered. If it's not centered, it will wobble all over the place and it'll wreck chicken plucker. So, it's very important that they're on there good and square. Now I leave a little bit of space around just in case I need to adjust this a little bit. That's what I use, stainless steel uh, bolts, nuts, and uh, that keeps everything from rusting because you do not want it to be rusting out on you that's for sure and that's perfect and when you tighten these keep in mind this is cast steel so you don't want to uh, you know come on to them too hard that it's going to break them the last thing you want to do is break the ears off of that flange the reason you want that grease fitting tight because if you don't water is going to seep down around into it and get right into your bearing in there and you don't want that this is my main shaft and this goes through that and it goes down through there's another one of these on the bottom there will be a pulley here that will come out through the side so that's kind of what we got going on here I got a drill out through So now this is supposed to go down through that. So it's supposed to be the same size shaft. Like that. I like it. Now I'm just putting these in here to level that uh, nylon plate. Now these screws are just temporary. Because I need something as I drop that plate in there. I want that plate to settle in there level. And it settles in there nice and level. Just like that. So we'll take some of these stainless screws. I bought all stainless because I don't want it to rust. And we should just be able, because that should be sitting right about there. And I did this intentionally, if you look, there's this band right around here on this barrel. There's one here and there's one here. And I put these screws intentionally so that three-quarter piece of nylon um, that we put in there, that whiteboard, will sit right in this groove. So that when I put the screws in, I don't have to guess. Right there and because I put these screws the exact same place on the barrel then I know that that's sitting level in there I can't stress to you if you ever build one of these how important it is to get this lined up right and what I'll do on the bottom is I'll drill the holes just a little bit larger than they need to be and that'll give me enough room to if I need to adjust it a little bit, I can. Because if you don't get this shaft straight up and down, it'll wobble and it'll uh, destroy your uh, plucker. I've got to cut this shaft off 
to the right height. I got this idea, How this special tape measure from be? Steve Tramper. How did that come to be? <laughs> well, let's just say I got broke. Just trying to think here. I'm thinking ahead, everybody, because you don't want you don't want to drop a chicken in, start the old thing up, and then have the chicken go wee 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 <laughs> and land in your neighbor's yard. We don't want chickens to fly 40 feet in the air. This, oh, this is so good. There. Maybe you should keep that on there as you build. Yeah. You're amazing, dear. Little puppy dog gonna hunt. I think hunt. all the hens think you are too. They like hanging out with you. Most. People pay six to eight hundred dollars for these things. But here at Tony T's, machine shop and manufacturing <laughs> maintenance memorabilia and mobility, we just put it all together just because we can. I mean, come on people. This thing is amazing. Now that I have all that in, I'm making what we call our plucking plate. And the plucking plate is this. Of course, this piece of wood on there, that's just simply, I'm using that to make circles with, so I have a perfect circle. And I just drilled a hole in the center put a bolt through it and marked on my piece of wood the measurements I want for my circles um, my orient orientation for the circles and uh, then these here are the plucking fingers and they will come through and you pull them through and set them in there like that and they're like that and so that's my first circle I've drilled I've got those done so now I'm marking it and making sure I have everything for the next bunch marking out what we need here and I always use a permanent marker so nothing gets erased and I'm coming in two and a half which is this hole and then this one and then this one so I've got the first two circles and I just put that in there and then you just move this right along just like that and it makes your perfect circle and you're done you never have to guess at it and wonder about it or anything. I had to make a uh, flange because there's a lot of pressure on this plate in the center. Uh, centrifugal force and everything with the weight of the chickens and all that. So I, I thought about it last night and all I did was I took a piece of flat quarter inch, cut it out, drilled it for holes in the center, and then took my um, stainless shaft that will have the pulley on it and then the pulley obviously is run by the belt that goes over to the motor and then I just do that like that and that's what I did there welded this right onto it so it's nice and solid turned it over done a nice bead of weld there well and, and uh, made it really nice so that'll work there I'll put them two inches apart This plate is just uh, aluminum, and again, it's just stuff I had kicking around. I think that should work. Rook to night. Checkmate. <laughs> As you can tell, I do not know how to play chess. This here is called the plucker plate. You ever get your plucker plate stuck? Call Plucks or Us, where we can get your plucker plate unstuck with the grandest of plucker pleasure. Yes, folks, there's a little bit of plucker in all of us. Do you know the plucker man, the plucker man, the plucker man? Do you know the plucker man who lives down Plucky Lane? Are you tired of being plucked? Is things just plucked up? <laughs> well, get your new Tony T's plucker upper, where we make sure your plucker upper is not plugged by the plucker. I am going to take this here in on the drill press and I am going to make a lot of holes. A whole lot of drill going on. 
everywhere you see one of these crosses, that's where they're going to go. 40 holes. 40 holes! So we're going to take it in on the doodle press and we're going to put 40 holes through it. Once we get the 40 holes through it, then we will be able to put the plucker finger in the plucker hole. So this is the plucking plate here with all the fingers in it. We've got that all secure. It's in a two pillow blocks. Um, there's a flange here I made to bolt that to there. There's a rod straight down through two pillow blocks and uh, it holds it in place down through there. Now what I'm doing is the fingers for the sides. So I'm just uh, figuring those out, see where they're gonna go. The first row of fingers are in here. So you can start to see now as that spins, the uh, chicken goes around in there, bounces around, and these fingers grab the feathers and uh, strip the feathers off them. Obviously the centrifugal force pushes the chicken out and uh, in contact with these fingers that'll pluck the feathers right off of them. So now what I'm doing is I'm making my second ring of fingers and they're just a little under three inches difference here i'm staggering them instead of just straight up lines i'm staggering them so that there's no straight open areas these here are just silicone little fingers there's a little groove there you pull it through and it sits in that groove and seats in there <laughs> You can see it all turns in there really well and uh, that'll spin the chickens around. So now what I've got to do is back on the back part of the barrel here, I'm going to make a cut and that's where the pulley and the V-belt and all that will go in right in through here. We'll make sure we cut it right on the top of that white plate because we don't want a lip there that would prohibit the uh, feathers and water from flowing right out really nice and easy. That's kind of what we did. As you see, we got just a little bit of a lip there. So I'm just gonna trim that down just a little more because I don't want that lip. That gives us an excellent place for all the feathers and the guck and everything else to drop down. So what I'm doing here, these long uh, plucking fingers, I'm going to put three of them right down through here. One, and then there'd be one down through here, and then there'd be one down through here. And the reason I'm doing that is that'll be a sweeper down underneath. As those feathers and stuff build up, it'll keep throwing that out. Um, into the uh, out through that uh, chute right here. If you look in there, you can see those sweepers. It's a sweeper cell. <laughs> so when you turn them, it will go around, and as the feathers build up, it'll catch them and throw them out through there. You're milking a cow. That's one stubborn cow. <laughs> and it's a dry run. If she's milking that hard, she can go back to the pasture. We've got our sweeper fingers on the bottom plate, all in place. We have got the fingers are all that we have for up here in place. Everything's good there. We have our Exit chute for water and feathers done. So now we're going to kind of blow this out a little bit. There's some metal shavings and stuff. And then we're going to come in here behind it here and we're going to cut the 
hole for the belt and then it's back to designing the bracket for the motor to sit on and that's going to go right on the back here and we'll attach it to here we just cut out our uh, our slot for the v-belt i like it we're getting closer all right we're going to take a little break get a little bite to eat then we'll come back down and we're going to think about how we're going to mount this motor.